Okay, hey everyone, we're back to uh, messing with this controller again. I think I might finally have it figured out. Uh, not not impressed with this controller at all, I must say. Um, I've had really bad connectivity issues. I've had to buy multiple different brands of USB to serial adapters to um, try and actually connect to it. Still wouldn't work. Had to borrow a friend's laptop uh, to try and connect to it using the, the USB uh, to serial uh, adapter, and that was hard work. It's like it wants to use some sort of old technology when we could just be using something like USB or, you know, whatever. Anything better than serial, right? Uh, so that's been really annoying. Finally got connected to it and got the, um, I don't know if you can see that down there, the uh, firmware updated, changed those settings we were talking about before to try and get that fixed array voltage and nothing happened. So I got onto the support team and asked them what was going on, sent them all the settings and so on and I got uh, some information back about uh, wind mode because although um, this is function on this controller that's in the settings and everything uh, there's no information of it about it online, not that I could find anyway so you have to contact support and they send you this documentation about wind charging mode. Now, nowhere in it does it say that in order to do wind mode you need to con charge controllers, one in MPPT, one in diversion. So, you know, one's doing the change of the voltage and then one's dumping the current through a battery. But I don't want that, I don't need that, so I was like, okay, well that's actually not what I need at all. So I was just, I thought I'll, I'll read through it anyway. And I just so happened to notice that it says here Wind settings and custom programs required dip switch 1 in the up position. Now my dip switch was in the down position. And I thought, hmm, maybe something to do with that dip switch being in the up position that allows you to program custom settings. So I tried that and I had a little bit of success. And things started working properly. While I was doing that, I got a uh, an email back from the support. And they've said to me, in order for custom programming to take effect, you must set dip switches 4, 5 and 6 in the on position. Now if we look at the, uh, this is the manual that comes with the charge controller, there is no mention of 4, 5 and 6 being anything to do with being able to fix, uh, set fixed charging voltages. It's to do with absorbent stage, float stage, equalizer and it's, there's nothing in this anywhere that says that you need to have it in a custom setting in order to change the fixed array voltage settings. Nothing in there at all. doesn't say it anywhere. I've checked. And then if we look at what it says about adjusting uh, setting switches up here, when you get the control it says switch one, reserved for future use, setting switch one should remain in the off position. That's why it was in the off position. But yet the uh, the other documentation about having it in mode says it needs to be in the on position. So it's very confusing. The information on here is, is it doesn't help with you trying to figure out what's going on. The information I got then from from uh, the support team was just talking about four, five, and six, which is which I haven't even changed because it's now working. And when I just put the the uh, first dip switch to the on position, so it's been really a big hassle just to get it to do something that it should have done and the reason it's been a big hassle is because the documentation is contradictory and I mean this in one uh, one good thing was the support team did get back to me very quickly but overall for an expensive piece of kit disappointing um, disappointing documentation uh, disappoint disappointing um, connectivity I mean it's just they need to sort out they need a they need a software that runs on Macs, they need connectivity that's much easier, it should all just be done through Ethernet rather than having to get serial adapters and COM ports and all that. It's silly. But anyway, we managed to get it done. So, we're going to stop moaning and it's all off at the moment. Um, we're going to change it because it's currently at 50, 45 volts, so we're going to change it to 50 volts, go and turn it all on and we shall see if it works. Okay, so I'm just going to get this uh, fixed array voltage setting set correctly. So it's charge control. We go to target. We want this target to be 50 volts. That should be our most efficient voltage. So we go through 
uh, just put in the uh, IP setting. Okay, settings are in. Say. So now we just program that to the charge controller. Disconnect to the program. Program that. We'll let that do its thing, and we'll go and turn it on and see if it's uh, see if it's working. Right. Okay, just off of the intake here. Just thought I'd give it a quick clean before we uh, turn it on and run a full test. See, it's pretty good anyway. But I might as well just make sure we're not going to lose any any power. It's actually been working really well. This I haven't been having to come up here and clean it. Um, not even weekly. So really happy with it. This design is going to stay. Um, potentially it could do with being a tiny bit wider, losing a bit over the edges, but um, I'm going to fiddle this in I think, so I think that's good. Getting plenty of water, so we're going to uh, turn it on and see if we finally got the problem sorted. Right, let's get this turbine back on, run it at absolute full bore and take some readings. Silly me, got about the isolator. Turn that on. Now we're going full ball. So I'm just having to write that software again. For some reason I always get that EEPROM edited while running even though I switch it off. It still reads like 0.9 of a volt even though everything switched off, even if I disconnect the cable. always get that. I uh, don't know why that is but probably just another bug. Um, or like I say everything's unplugged but it still just comes up. Um, so I'm just having to, it was still reading the wind mode curve that I'd set in it um, so I'm just changing it back now now we've got that 4, 5 and 6 setting to custom um, so hopefully that will now work so so we've uh, taken the recommendation from the uh, from the support team to set them to custom even though there's no information about that changing the fixed voltage in the settings but we've done that now so now we're having to set the battery voltages manually and now after this is done we should have it functioning how we want it to and it should be up around 300 watts something like that. Yeah, see this is what I'm talking about Look, everything disconnected still sees 0.06 on the array voltage which means it gives me a, a fault. Silly little bugs like that you know doesn't make any sense. I'm just gonna do a reset to reset this fault and then we'll check it do a test. Success at last so you see we're just uh, heading into absorption mode there which is good, that's what we want it's an absorption the voltage is coming up because it's it's tapering down the current which is what we want, we want it to go up once the battery is full it goes into free spin and if we apply a significant load to it it should go straight down to its fixed 50 volt target and then we get our 297 watts yes! It's working, it's exactly what we want. That should change in a second from absorption to nothing because it's fixed voltage, which it will, but it's a bit slow because it's a bit buggy. Yeah, that is exactly what we want. Actually, it's not doing it because it's uh, because it's not we need to use more power. <laughs> Essentially, let's slow this grinding wheel down and see if we can make it pull a bit more current. Maybe no, it's just got too much power coming in. <laughs> can't change it enough, I need to boil a kettle or something. But as you can see, just turn that off now, as you can see it's working exactly as we planned it and that's really really very good. So all the people that doubted, I hope that's uh, I hope that's put your doubts to rest now. This is system is, so we had 190, I don't know, 196 or something there I think. Uh, so this system is now around 66 to 67 percent efficient and for a DIY uh, turbine hand-built that is incredibly good so 
anyone that doubted it, I hope that's put all those doubts to rest. A lot of people were saying I should be using load, uh, dump load control, and I didn't want to do that because I like the simplicity of this. You see now this can just free spin if it wants to, it doesn't cause any damage to it, it's fine to free spin. I draw a load on it and it goes down to uh, 50 volts. That's the 50 volts we talked about in that video where we uh, decided that 50 volts was half uh, the speed of the velocity of the water jet, so it should be the most efficient voltage to be set up. So that's what we're fixed at, um, and that's what we're getting. So we're getting an extra uh, 30 watts on top of what we had when it was reading at 37 volts. Okay, so I hope that's cleared everything up. This project is now uh, put to bed for a bit. Uh, there's not really a lot more improvements I can make. A um, few things, sediment trap maybe, a um, couple of little improvements here and there, but we've got other more important things to do at the moment. So uh, this is going to be the last in this video series until we address it, maybe adding control systems and fancy things, but that might not be until a lot later, um, once maybe I've got some help to do that or something. So 297 watts there. That's just awesome. Oh yeah, and it's also, we should remember that this is its efficiency when it's running at 300 watts, which is about uh, half its capability if I added another nozzle. So another nozzle and we should get 550 to 600 watts, something like that. So really quite impressive really um, for such a small little, I mean the stream is just a drainage ditch really. Um, it's not even really a stream, it's just a drainage ditch off a little collection area above me here. So, so I think I've shown that uh, for not a lot of money, in fact actually that was one thing I was going to go through. Um, the system costs £3,500 in total. Um, so for £3,500 we've managed to make power. I've worked out it will take about 7 or 8 years to pay itself off uh, um, at its current uh, electricity rates but it's already paid itself off because it would have cost me way more than three and a half grand to put mains power in here so um, it's paid for itself already and it's fairly green there's plastic pipe and stuff but you know um, it's gonna last a long time so very pleased with it I hope that is uh, cleared everything up I hope the video series has been um, educational and um, maybe if anyone's got any projects planned and they want advice feel free to message me uh, I really enjoyed this system I think I've learned quite a lot about it now um, so yeah if anyone's uh, looking to put in a in a system like this sorry ran out of uh, card memory on the camera there so yeah as I was saying if um, if you've got a little stream on your land or anything like that uh, please let me know and uh, we can talk about maybe uh, designing a system. Like I say, I really enjoyed this. Um, it was really. Oh, look, we actually got slightly higher when we went slightly higher voltage there, so maybe still some little tweaks to be made, um, but I can mess around with that. So, um, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know in the comments um, if you've got any questions about it. I think most of it's covered now. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video series and thank you very much for watching.